Cooking in Falmouth is made possible in part by the following. Appliances donated by Crane Appliance. Kitchen installation donated by M. Duffany Builders. Specialty Studio Electric and Gallery Installation donated by David Rogers Electric. Kitchenware donated by Eastman's Hardware. Welcome to Falmouth is Cooking. We are here in this beautiful new kitchen, which I'm not going to be able to say is new too much longer, I think. <laughs> uh, but uh, we are at Falmouth Community Television for our monthly taping of uh, Falmouth is Cooking. And each week, uh, sorry, each month, we try to have uh, a different person featured, uh, professional. Uh, and home cooks. I think uh, we're going to be going with some professionals for a while, so we certainly have someone with a lot of expertise. Uh, we have Bob Jarvis here today, who is uh, probably spent more time in the food industry than a lot of us would believe, considering the fact that you told me you grew up in uh, in the kitchen at the chart house, which is... Chart room, yes. Chart room, chart Absolutely. room. sorry, to a, good place, <laughs> to a good place to grow up, uh, uh, if you want to be if you want to be a chef. Bob now uh, owns the Quarter Deck, which I think you said in 02 is when you purchased that. Correct. Yes, yep. and, uh, and then um, you moved on to the Pilot House and bought that, which is a summer restaurant uh, located on the Canal in Sandwich. Correct. And then we have Bucatino's, which you've had for a couple of years now, four just about, I yes. guess. Yes. Huh? Okay. Yep. So what we did when we talked about having uh, the chef here and the owner um, to uh, to do some some cooking for us and show us how he makes all these delicious things in his in his restaurants, uh, we talked about pulling a restaurant uh, recipe from each restaurant. Absolutely. And that's what we did. So we have a beautiful beautiful mise en place set up here, uh, something for Clams Casino, which will be from the quarter deck. And uh, uh, the other recipe that we're making is the haddock chowder, and that's from Pilot House. Right. And then uh, finally, we're going to finish it up with, help me, arrabbiata. Arrabbiata. Arab ar arrabbiata. Oh, arrabbiata. There you go. Mm, almost. Not as good as oh, you. Did you spend time in Italy? You learned that on the floor in the chart room. That's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Which is going to be a pasta sauce. And if we have time at the very end, uh, because great minds think alike, and I was talking about compound butter, and I was thinking uh, before we started the taping, how can we show people how to use other ways to use compound butter, because you're, you're making a, a pound of it, right. and uh, you already had something planned, so I we're going to try to do some pasta with uh, your pound of compound butter that you may have lurking in the back of your, in your freezer. So again, welcome, Chef. Thank you. And thank you for giving up your time. Absolutely. And, uh, and coming here and going to show me how to open some clams. Absolutely. And uh, hopefully I won't cut my hand off, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. Um, other, you know, crazier things have happened. True. So, uh, so let's get started. All right. Clams Casino. All and right. And you're going to get the butter going. Yeah, let's start off with the All casino right. butter. Okay. Okie dokie. So um, I'll need the, uh, the garlic and the shallots. Shallots and garlic, how many? All of them? Yeah. Very good. There you go. All right, we'll start here. And obviously the casino butter, um, you know, the star of the show on the casino butter is, is the garlic. And uh, one way that I like to do the garlic cloves is just kind of give it a little tap and, uh, and just break that up so that skin comes, comes right off. Okay. So. And, and also that, that little knot sometimes is a little thicker than and I like it. Okay. What if there's green in it? What if there's a, um, you know, that green, what is it, the sort of the root? Yeah. Or, is that okay? A lot yeah, of people yeah. say take it out. But I mean, like, 
sometimes it falls out on its own, right? Okay. It comes out as, you yeah. know, it looks like it's getting ready to grow. Yep. So okay. uh, take your pick, okay. um, you know, leave it in there one time, okay. take it out. All right, see and then you decide, you. Okay. you decide whether or not you, uh, it makes a difference to you. And, okay. and if it doesn't, leave it in. If it falls out, no problem. Okay. I, I never find a problem with things like that. So. Here's the question that I always get asked when I'm teaching at Highfield, and that is salted or unsalted butter? So, what do you think? Me personally, mm -hmm. it's it's on the pe preparation. Okay. And if you're using salted butter, think about that. Like you know, cut back salt. on okay. your salt. Okay. But I think um, with salted butter, sometimes it actually brings out the flavor a little bit better than than the way that. Uh, Put your trash right in here. Thank you. Yep. That it does, um, you know, just by salting it, because then you, you know, you can kind of skip that that part. Certainly for baking, I Absolutely. try to use the unsalted. Absolutely. Uh, but for cooking, I I find it, and uh, every butter also is uh, is significantly different in terms of the salting. We have good Cabot butter here, good New England butter. So all of this is going to go into the food processor, so I don't need to go completely crazy with it, but okay. I do like to um, break it up just a little okay. bit. So also just thinking uh, down the road, I might use a little bit of this shallot in the next dish. Okay. In the next right. dish. So, so let's put some aside. Sure. I think that this way of cooking, making sure that you have everything that you need so that you don't have to turn off the stove and go running to the store or call somebody in a panic, uh, with the is traditionally called mise en place, right. uh, I think is uh, probably the best thing for, um, for home cooks to learn. It really does make a difference to, to have everything out. Not only does it look nice, um, but you also can be sure, like I said, that you have everything True. in place. So. All right, uh, we ready Next, I'll for take the red pepper. Yep. Yeah. We using so, a whole pepper? No. Okay. We're just going to use about... A third of it? Not even. Okay. So, and don't forget, this is cooking, not baking, so... Um, it's it, it doesn't... It is forgiving. It, it's, it doesn't have to be completely measured. Um, you know, like my wife, she thinks she has to measure every recipe mm -hmm. cooking, and then I mm -hmm. come in and she goes, that's not what the recipe says. Relax. <laughs> Relax. It's gonna be okay. You know, we're cooking. We're not baking. If okay. we're baking, then that might be something different. But okay, okay. this this little piece right here mm -hmm. sometimes is a little bitter for me, yeah. so I just usually cut that out. Okay. Great. And a little bit of that parsley. Mm -hmm. And then lemon. Does the lemon get added at the very end? Yep. Is that enough? Sure. Okay. Well, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> I like that. And so what I'm also going to do is, because we're not at the restaurant, mm -hmm. and uh, me and you are the dishwashers tonight. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to try and make everything in one pot as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to do everything in the processor instead of doing stuff in a bowl. Right, so usually people might buzz, buzz their products and then grab a bowl, put their softened butter in and mix it that way. Mm -hmm. We're just going to do it all right in here. Mm -hmm. That way, when we're doing dishes, mm -hmm. we get yep. rid of... Okay, it's a plan. That's I right. I like that plan. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for thinking ahead. And we put our shallots aside for later. Okay. Yep. All right. All right, so I think I'm going to steal a little bit more, okay. a little more parsley, okay. just because we color. And like talking about with cooking, you know, sometimes if I'm at home, I don't have a red pepper. You have a yellow pepper. You have a green pepper. That's all fine. Um, you can put red, yellow, and green in. Still fine. You're not breaking any rules. Okay. Still legal. You could probably even do clams casino without peppers. 
Absolutely. You don't like peppers? Don't put them in. Okay. You don't like, you know, th this is this is part of it. So, and you can make it spicier if you wanted by adding. A absolutely. Okay. How so many here's the butter. Do you go through a week? <laughs> <laughs> I go a lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we we uh, you know we love butter. So. Don't we all? Thank you, Julia yes, Child. Absolutely. Yep. So I will take uh, the lemon. Mm -hmm. Rolling it to get some. That's right. Some of the juice. Absolutely. And your strainer. And I have a little strainer there. There we go. So this little recipe I made just for the for the home cook. It's not the the um, the restaurant recipe, obviously. So you broke it down for us. I did break it down so you could make it for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and these recipes will be on the screen. Um, when this is finished being edited, uh, then they'll also be, I believe, on our website, uh, the FCTV website, so that people can get them either way. Um, so, speaking of the heat, uh -huh. we'll take a little bit of the hot sauce. All right. Want some of my fancy black Abs pepper? Absolutely. You want the Worcestershire? And I think too? they said, what'd they say, three, three drops, say three, three drops, drops on the recipe? Three drops of Tabasco. Yeah. So, I just put six in there just to. Okay. And you kind of just feel it. The Worcestershire, it just adds that little extra body, that boldness, that it's very subtle. You don't taste it, but you would taste it if it wasn't in there. Okay. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it just gives it that, that little. That, that little, umami that they yeah. talked about. Yeah. And that's what we love. I need just you to, to do bump, this. just bump those up a little bit, so. Okay, so we have a pound of softened butter, a couple cloves of garlic, a fairly large shallot, and uh, those were all coarse chopped. We've got some red bell pepper, parsley, a little bit of white wine. I love the way you measure. That's a great way to measure. Um, lemon juice, hot sauce, Worcestershire, and salt and pepper to taste. Yes. And we have our salt and pepper. I don't know where they went. Here's my I favorite. have some. You have your famous I uh, have my fancy. Look, look at, at this. Isn't that cool? Wow. I know. We got this from Eastman. They um, furnished the kitchen with most of the stuff. Isn't it? Is perfect. that enough? That's perfect. I know. I love and this. And I'm going to give it a, just a little more salt because that is salted butter that we are using. Okay. Oh, a little more. Wait. There you go. Oh, there. Perfect. I like it. I'm like a mad scientist. I, I like it. I like it. <laughs> and we're going to want a big spoon to push yes, that down. Yes, absolutely. Right? Either that or How's that? Perfect. And that butter's been out for about an hour? Yeah, it's softened room temp. Okay. So it should move around for us. And that's going to get all combined. And. Hopefully. It will. This is where we um, like our live television. That's right? right. That's right. All right, one more should do it. There. When people ask me, either when I'm um, teaching at Highfield or if I've, if they know me because I've been writing, people say, "What's the most important skill you need to develop as a cook?" Um, I always have one answer for them, and I can. I, this makes me think of it, which is patience. And I think that a lot of us just want it to happen right away, and we just give up on it. You know, we just walk away from it and say, "I'm never making those clams casino again because the butter didn't work." Well, but uh, we're developing our our patience, and uh, it's coming together like it should. Do you have one particular skill that you would say that? Uh, Think uh, knife skills are most important. I'm, I'm going to go patience? with I'm going to go with with knife, but but patience is uh, is unbelievably important, okay. <laughs> especially when you're running a kitchen. Absolutely. Your, so I mean, there's so many there's so many things that that um, you can't rush 
in the kitchen to make things the right way. So, you know, you're never going to quickly braise a lamb shank. That's right. You know, low and slow. Unless Let, you have an instant pot. <laughs> <laughs> walk away. Then just walk away. Yeah. So. And we were talking earlier about, I think I mentioned, uh, mentioned it, that we're going to have this beautiful compound butter uh, that's nicely colored, nicely flavored, and we've got a lot of it. So what else are we going to use it for? Uh, and uh, we'll figure that out I mean, later on. We're certainly going to use it in the Clams Casino. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, this, this is so versatile mm -hmm. that it, it just goes... It just goes on and on. So I don't this know if tricky. you can get a get a good shot. Here we want this to be up okay. here. Oh, what a nice light processor! Oh Thank God. you. Okay, this is an important technique here. Okay, so you just just gonna pat it down. Mm -hmm. And then twist the ends. And that'll tighten everything up for you. Okay. And that's it. And that can be refrigerated or frozen. Absolutely. Okay. So we'll throw it in the ice box just to firm it up right okay. now. Show us what you already have in there. Show us the other one that you, uh, please. Yes. So this is what it's going to look like when it's. There we go. Oh, wow. Cool. Okay. So there we have our compound butter. That's a lot of butter. So on steaks, on chicken, on fish, on vegetables. Absolutely. As a basis for a sauce, you're going to show us how potatoes. to make a beurre manier. And uh, potatoes, just a pasta. Yep. Lots yep. and lots and lots of uses. Yeah, it goes, uh, you can always go back into the freezer, pull it out, and take a little piece yep. off, take two pieces off. Put it on a piece of fish right at the end as it, before it comes out of the oven. Boom, a little striped bass with a little casino butter. Okay. Happy days. All right. Nice to know. Okay, now we will. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, now we, we will, got to. We will start the on test. the fun stuff. So, I am not a clam opener, so I'm going to try to learn how to do this. All right, so you, you see the shape of the clam. I don't know if the camera can, mm -hmm. can see this, I'm but sure this, is, this is the side that we're, we're looking for to open. So and we want the, like the hinge on our, on our left if we're, right. we're right-handed. Right. Otherwise, it would be the opposite? Yes. Okay. It's, it's, always on, it's always on that end. Okay. And nice and gentle. Just be okay. nice and gentle with it. And it should open up no problem. But there are those certain clams you know, clams are like people. There's some difficult ones <laughs> okay. out there. And hopefully we get one so that I can, uh, I can show you what, we, what we're going to do. Okay. So it goes right in that? Right in that. Okay. Now, a lot of people have said to me, throw them in the freezer for, for half an hour. Okay. And then they sort of like open a little bit, and then it's easier to get the knife in. But you've okay. got a brand new knife here. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to try this. Oops. So I'm going to hold it like this. I feel like I just need to bless myself <laughs> before I do this. Right. So we're keeping that gorgeous liquor, absolutely, the clam liquor, yeah, and we're just arranging those, and then we're going to put on. Right All right, wait! Don't leave okay, me here. No, no, don't leave me here alone with my knife and everything. So I do it like this. Okay. So yeah. there's the side that oh, you want. Okay. That's the. Well, oh, I had him upside down. Yep. All so right, just like that. that. And then I take this and I go in like right about here. Yep. We're getting this on camp. Oh, look. Nice and gentle, nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. He's not opening for me. Oh, I'm getting a lot of clam. I think I'm going to need the chef to do this. Okay. I think I need practice. If only I'd known, I would have practiced all night. Sorry. So sometimes, when they're <laughs> difficult. Sometimes they're difficult. Right on the back hinge. Oh. Okay. And just wiggle your knife. Okay. There. Boy. How many of these have you done in your life? A couple. gazillion? A couple. 
Is this something you learned early on in the chart room? That's one of them. Really? Yeah. Oops. So you were at the chart room, and then uh, after that, you moved on to the quarter deck, or was it? Uh, uh, no, I actually, um, I, uh, I kind of bounced around a little bit. I was, uh, I was in Nantucket for a summer. I was out in Colorado mm -hmm. for um, a couple summers. Mm -hmm. um, then I came back to the chart room, I think, in the uh, 1990. Okay. So I think I left there in 86, came back in 90. And then I was there from 90 until 02. 02, when yeah. you did the, yeah. okay. And then um, I went to the quarter deck full time okay. from there. And, and uh, I guess I got the, the restaurant bug, I the fever. I guess you did, I guess you <laughs> did, to open the pilot house. Uh, uh, the other thing is that you have a family. You are a dynasty. True. The Jarvises are well known in Falmouth um, for the chart room. Yep. And other endeavors. What else? Uh, no, my I mean, both my parents were in the uh, in the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. They, my father worked at, uh, and my mother both worked at the Papanasset Inn. Hildred's uh, um, Cottage. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And uh, and he worked at the Kunamesset Inn in the fifties. And well, notice I'm not doing the clams anymore. I'm letting the expert. <laughs> Oh. It's a tough I'll one. Practice. It's a tough it one. A tough one. We got some tough cookies That's all here. Right. Tough That's clams. okay. All right. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So what are we going to do next? Okay. Um, do we do lemon or just the breadcrumbs? So I will take the breadcrumbs. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take what? some. I'm going to take my bacon. Okay. Oh, here's the other one that we opened earlier. That's the bad guy, right? That's the bad guy. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to go to put this here. Okay. And I'm going to grab my casino butter. And they don't need any pepper because I've already done that, but I'm so tempted. I won't. <laughs> Breadcrumbs. Yes. Okay. Um, when I'm shopping a lot, I see all these big bags of breadcrumbs now by the seafood departments right. in a lot of the stores, and certainly in, in our fish stores we have them also. Um, but uh, you make your own breadcrumbs? Yes. Okay. And how do you do that? So, um, you know, it depends on the time of the year. If, uh, if we have ends of breads, those, those got, get toasted off mm -hmm. and put through the grinder. Go over there, okay. Yep. And so they get ground. Right. And then we season them ourselves. Okay, paprika uh, looks like, paprika. Paprika. Garlic. Uh, garlic, onion, uh, thyme, uh -huh. and um, parsley. Okay, anything of, or any of those herbs and the um, garlic fresh, or are they the granulated, the, the already dried? Yep, all so granulated, dried. Yep, yep, okay. absolutely. Because this is just gonna sit and doesn't need to be refrigerated, right. so we don't have to worry about yep. it go, doing anything in terms of making people think. True. Right. Okay. And that's it. And they're gonna go in a 425 oven for 10 minutes, five yes. minutes? 10 minutes. And, and if you're, you know, you like your bacon crispy or, you know, you, you're looking at them and you're like, wow, that doesn't seem like that's right. You can always throw, you know, throw it on broil real okay. quick. Wa stay with it. Watch it. Okay. And, and crisp up that bacon that okay. way. Um, you know, we obviously at the restaurant are running out of a 550 degree oven, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not like the, the home chef, but... Our directions here say to broil right. for about seven minutes, but I absolutely, uh, depending on how close you are also to your broiler. True, true. You so, to, uh, you know, sure. we can... Um, make sure that they don't, that it doesn't burn. So I, uh, 
I have a family recipe for Clams Casino that I think is just sort of adapted over the years, but it's made with a package stuffing. Okay. And uh, I think what I would do with that, because the my family is pretty much wedded to that particular Absolutely. Um, that particular flavor of this uh, package stuffing, and regular readers of my food column will know what I'm talking about because I'm always complaining about it. Uh, just run that through the processor and then add the stuff that uh, that you suggested adding and we'll be all set. Perfect. All right. So we want um, we want about five minutes on that just to check them. Yep. So five to seven at least and, seven. and we'll right. uh, we'll keep an eye on that. And, okay. And when they're uh, ready this. to go then. Good Gail. That was good. <laughs> this is good. I like this. Mm. I'm going to get your instructions for that. Okay, okay? no problem. I really do like so it. So it's perfect uh, for for fish. Mm -hmm. um, it it, it All works. All seafoods, yeah. casseroles. Yeah, yeah. You know the casseroles that we always see on Cape Cod yes. with uh, the Ritz crackers. Yes. I think that's better than the Ritz crackers. Well, I mean, um, some people swear by the Ritz cracker, mm. and I'm mm. not going to argue. That's everybody's. It's just the way that um, we always did it, and okay. you know we stay true. So, okay. Okay. and we have the casino butter recipe that will be on the uh, on the screen shortly, and also then the clams casino. And we're going to move on to our next recipe. Perfect. Can we do that? Absolutely. Which is our from the pilot house, the um, haddock chowder. Sure. All right. Fresh thyme in that. We have more butter. An onion, some Yukon gold potatoes, uh, a bay leaf, fresh thyme, and fish broth. Uh, what it says on our recipes is that we don't need a, um, uh, no need to buy fish broth. We're gonna learn how to make our own here. So, so for this, this small recipe, mm -hmm. um, it's you know serving six people. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get enough flavor off of the fish. Um, you know if we're making batches mm -hmm. at the restaurant and, and we we use we have fish stock on, sure. out on hand so sure. so you know that's the benefit of uh, being a restaurant right that's why things <laughs> when you get your restaurant recipes and you go ahead and you um, make them at home and you say you know something's missing from that there you have it but I think that uh, most professional chefs that I've met over my almost 40 years of writing about uh, food here in Falmouth are very willing to give up their secrets. I haven't really uh, <laughs> um, gotten a lot of people who've said, oh, wait, you know, I can't possibly tell you what's in that. So, uh, so thank you for no, uh, no showing problem, us no all problem. of this stuff. So a little trick of the trade, always uh, put either a wet towel down or something underneath your, your cutting board, helps it from sliding around and making mistakes, so. That's the piece of paper I just picked up and yes. threw it and throw <laughs> But it was a good teaching moment, by the way. There you go. This is a chef who can make lemonade out of lemon. <laughs> Absolutely. All, All right. right, well, so let's go. So we're doing onions uh, now. Okay, let's go into our uh, Onions and potatoes, bay leaf, thyme. There's a lot of preparation that goes into just a little bit of the cooking demo like we're doing here. I mean, you and I had to meet in advance and talk about what we were gonna do. We had to get the recipes ready. You had to schlep all this stuff over here and uh, uh, I really do appreciate no your problem. giving up your time. No problem. All right, the onion. The onion, here we go. Yeah. Okay. No tears. No tears. Okay. Do I have any tricks that really work? No. No. <laughs> I mean, Martha Stewart says do it near a gas flame. Uh, this, uh, no. Do it with onion, I mean with garlic out. Uh, this, that, and the other thing. Contact the lenses? Sometimes the only thing that I can are. tell you is a quick secret. Okay. And so, when, when I dice an onion, mm -hmm. I don't go all the way through. So I stop. Okay, I don't so know. you're leaving like maybe about a half an inch up here? Yeah, maybe right. a quarter. Okay. What have you. Okay, and you've and got a nice sharp knife, of course. And see these. Oh, 
like and then petals I, on and the And then flower. I do one straight through. Okay. Same thing, three okay. quarters of the way through. All right. And now when I go down. Yep. You, there you got it. It's the all pieces. diced, okay. right? It's mm -hmm. all diced for us. Right. So then we can go. It sounds wonderful. And then getting all those end pieces a little bit. Are we going to melt our butter in this? We're going to melt our butter right oh in there. So if you want to put that on a... Uh, on a low? Uh, low to medium. Okay. For right now until I can catch up. Power. Oh. Did we turn this on before we started taping? No, so... Help me, chef. Okay. Please. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the blind leading the blind. We're just learning. Um, the good old uh, both induction. Of us, both of us the, are just learning induction. The good induction. new induction. Yeah. Yes. Let's not call it These old. These are throwouts. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, right, I can't see. get it unlocked. Oven. I'll check. Not Ten yet. Ten, now we're good. Okay. Uh, let's see. I know. The lock won't come off. What's that up there? This will get cut out, right? <laughs> um, we didn't have the pot on the burner. Is that what happened? <laughs> yes, the pot was not on the burner. Unlock. Oh, yeah, she thinks she's so smart here, right? Where did we, how did we do that I last time? We did it last time. I can't get it off. So you have to hold it. Uh, All right. Perfect. Thank I you. Think, well, there you go. There you go. Power. And then we tell it we want this burner over here, right? Yeah. On yes. high. Okay. Medium high, chef? Um, medium. Okay. Let's do medium. We Thank you. We don't want the butter to, to burn, so right off the bat. So we're going to do it at five. Perfect. Let's just get that warm. So for anybody learning an induction stovetop, <laughs> hold the lock button down, okay? And we're unlocked and we're ready to go. See, and that's, that's getting hot. And that's what I love about it. You're always learning in the always kitchen, aren't you? Always learning in the kitchen. <laughs> oh. Yes, sir. So we're going to pick it back up. We're going to take a cut shot from something and then okay. pick it up. So do you want me to say that about the induction burner, too? No, that's fine. All right, okay. <laughs> um, let me just get the butter. So you, could just, you could start by saying something like, uh, okay, we've got that start, we have that going now. Okay. All right, we ready? Yeah. All right, so we have this burner is on medium, and you're finishing up the onions, okay. and we're going to get a stick of butter perfect. to go into. Uh, so if you want to add the butter okay. to the pan, that would be perfect. Both of these? Sure. Okay. So this is going to melt, saute the onions, right? and uh, once they're tender, then we add the potatoes, correct? Correct. All right. So getting back to the patience, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. never rush your, on this recipe, or if you're making clam chowder, um, unbelievably important to, to have patience, because you don't want to rush your onions. You want your onions to be translucent. Um, no, no crunch in your onions at all. So when you are melting your butter, and what's better than butter and onions? I don't know. The smell but, is just wonderful. Uh, so, so be patient. Be patient. Let them and, cook. And taste, you know, and taste the product as, as you're as you're going through it. So. Okay. Um, Get us a spoon too. Oh, check the. How are they doing? We're getting there. We're getting close. They're bubbling. I'll take them out for you. Thank you. Oh, I think I'll use this one here. All right, these look absolutely gorgeous. So this, ba this bacon was par cooked. It was already. 
pre-cooked a little bit, wasn't a it? A little bit. A tiny bit? Yep. Is that okay? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the smell is just wonderful. I wish you could smell this. This is just terrific. How can we get television to get smell of it? smell a vision they smell call it. Yeah, I yeah. Guess, huh? I've heard about that. All right. <laughs> Our butter's melting. And those are ready to go. Those are ready to be served. Oh, just beautiful. And look at that. Yeah, a little collar. Okay. And Absolutely gorgeous. And there you have Thank it. You. So. Oh, it looks beautiful. Yeah. And all this great sauce down in there. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to make this right here for now. And we'll take a little taste after it cools off. Absolutely. Some. So if you want to bump that up to, yep. let's go to six. Okay. I had Perfect. it at seven, but you started to talk about I, I was, patience. Yeah. I was and then I, <laughs> I figured I better... <laughs> I better uh, put it back down to five. Yeah, okay. So, here we go. We right. add our onions. Okay. That's a fair amount of onions. How much? How many pounds of um, fish are we going to use? We're going to use uh, one and a half pounds okay. of, of haddock. Because that's like a good two cups of. Uh, yeah. But when these cook down, uh, you're, okay. It's it's really going to. Um, And and this will be a uh, a gluten free dish. We will not tighten this up. Okay, with at a, all. a roux of any sort. Right, okay, right. or cornstarch or anything like that. So now, once again, perfect time as you get your onions going here. Potatoes. I'll take just. I'll give these a little season. Oh wait, it's my turn here. Right? Do your thing. Do your thing. Yeah. Look at, but it's... The battery's... No, it's brand new. Oh, right. But, oh well. <laughs> we got some pepper in there anyway. <laughs> what can I say? All right, give me a little more. A little more. We're learning our induction, I mean. Uh, oh, heat. Yeah. I thought you meant pepper. There we go. Seven, Perfect. five? Yeah. Okay. We're learning our induction. Uh, our induction, how to. Temperatures. Induction our, 101, this our is. Our temperatures. Yeah, so you just got one at home, right? Because you don't have gas on your street, I, so you have a, uh, I just got an one. induction cooktop. I do, too. And, and uh, I'm loving it because it just brings water to a boil so quickly. I, that's the one thing that yeah. I can't complain. This yeah. is the one thing that I can complain okay. about. I haven't learned what number is the right number mm -hmm, and how mm -hmm. to. And if it were a flame, you would know. You right, would be able to look right. at it right away and say. So with the potatoes, these, these are Yukon Golds. You can use chef potatoes. You can use russets. You can use Red Bliss. Um, it's really personal preference. Oh. You can peel, you can not peel, it really doesn't matter. A potato like this, me personally, uh, I don't peel Just these. Just washed, well washed, but yep. Well washed and, and uh, you know, like I said, it's personal preference. If you like them, peel away. Um, at the restaurant, we peel because, really? our, because our customers want us to peel. Um, so okay. we could... No. We could peel if We're not you, peelers. All right, you like it? I like it with I the skin. I actually like it. My the skin is better for you. It's, as long as it's washed, I think it's fine. Perfect. Um, fiber and all that good stuff. I'm with you. And I like the red, too, because red adds color to the, uh, the finished dish. Ab absolutely. Um, but, uh, but I can see in a restaurant, people expect it a certain way. True. So. so let me grab my little plate again. Okay. Mm, again, we have a great smell coming up here. Nothing like sautéing onions and butter. <laughs> Absolutely nothing like it. Sometimes if I've had a bad day and I'm just going to like cook like nothing but uh, pasta for dinner or something really simple, I'll just go home and sauté, ch chop an onion Perfect. and then just sauté it because I just love the way it smells. Absolutely. It sort of makes you all ready for uh, um, cooking. Food of life. Food of life. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's beautiful. 
So do we want these to change color? We, yes, we want them to get translucent, no okay. crunch, because the crunch leaves a little bit of that onion flavor, or a lot of bit of that onion oh, flavor. Okay. So when the onions are Good. still crunchy, you get that burn of the onion. When the onions are translucent and really cooked well and cooked down, and you can see, completely see the difference. They're, they're starting to turn here. I don't know if the camera can see these, but yep. from, from where they started to where they are right now, we're making progress. <laughs> so now is a perfect time after we get the uh, potatoes. The potatoes completely diced mm -hmm. to have a glass of wine. Just okay. a little sip, because that way you're not rush, you're not in a rush to do anything. You're having a little taste, everything's good. Get in your glass. That's right. I knew that would work. It did. <laughs> it did. I could find the glasses. Uh. Oh, here. Why not? Yep. Dry white wine, right, for this? Perfect. Oh, they're starting to move now. Look at this. Here you go, sir. Oh, oh cheers. Cheers. This is very fancy. Mm. Delicious. We have some fancy cooks. That's aren't we? perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. If that so, that'll give you patience. If that's nothing right. Else. That's right. We're not we're not in a rush. Mm -hmm. We're not in a rush at all. So that. it's looking to me like equal parts. Onion and uh, um, potatoes, but this is going to cook down. You said absolutely. So then it's absolutely. Like I mean, it's already cooked down by half now, mm -hmm. and it's and we're halfway there on the onions. So well. So once again, I'm I'm doing good. my my one pot um, maneuver. Good. Um, so we don't have to wash. You know if. If we were going for more stewy end of things, mm -hmm. you know, we could we could cut the potatoes bigger, leave the the fish chunkier. You know, you could always add a little something. This is your classic traditional haddock chowder, the way that I was brought up on how haddock chowder is supposed to be. Very simple: butter, onions, potato. Haddock, your your fish stock, little bit of thyme, little bit bay of leaf. Addicts, yep. Finish that off. Touch of cream at the end. Done. And that's that's the whole soup. I mean, it really is simplicity at its best. Good. And all right, let me. So now we're we're getting to that point in time. Still has a little bit of crunch to it, so okay. it needs just a couple more minutes. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna I'm gonna prep the time. I've got a little bit of time. You have a little bit of time. I got to a little prep time on time. my hands, so and take care of the time. You got time in your hands and on your hands. So okay. just have some fresh time here, and I'm just gonna just peel it right off. Now my lazy way of doing it at home. Because I'm, I, this is one of my. Mm, I mean, it, it's wonderful. just. Yeah, that's really nice. Uh, is to throw the whole thing in, and then fish out the stalks at right. the end. Yep. And that's but are fine. you going to chop yours to uh, give it a little, a little aroma? Bit. Whoops. A little bit. I am. Okay. Right. My least favorite thing to do is to do the time. <laughs> Don't ask me why, <laughs> but it is. I can chop onions till. The cows come home, as they say, but uh, <laughs> pulling those leaves off the time, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, while the onions cook, I've got nothing but time. Yep. And bay leaf. True. Have bay leaf. And if you don't have fresh? You can use dried. We can use Absolutely. dried. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So this recipe actually calls for a tablespoon of fresh thyme, so yep. we would use a teaspoon of dried? Yes. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. And not ground time, but but just the time leaves. leaf. Yes. That you can. Yep. Okay. 
Yep. Uh, dried dried herbs always have a uh, more strength. Yes. Yep. This is looking pretty good to me now. Good. Look at that. Perfect. Beautiful. All right. Let's let's add In our the uh, potatoes. Add our potatoes. Okay. Stir. Please. So we're starting mm -hmm. to, to layer flavors here, slowly but surely, layering the flavors. Anything that sort of gets stuck on the bottom, you're scooping up? I'm moving everything around so it doesn't get. Okay. And now, once again, I'm just going to, just a little bit. I'm going to bring over the other pepper. There you go. This was ground from our... Uh, grinder on a good day when it wasn't giving us trouble. <laughs> Couple pinches, okay? Yes, perfect. Right. Mm. Okay, this is on eight. Do you want it on so high? Sticking a little bit. Want yep. a little lower? Nope. Nope. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Bay leaf and all here. Now I'm going to go to where my. I hope the cameras can get this. So this my is time is in. The smell is terrific. Okay. And here we have our haddock. Other fish we can use. A firm white fish of some Cod. sort. Cod. Cod. Um, haddock. Pollock. pollock. Uh -huh. Yep. Um, any, any of those works unbelievably well. Pollock is, we're seeing a lot more of Pollock now. Absolutely. I think it's, uh, it's haddock and cod are being overfished. What do you need? Yes, I was looking for, what? I had a little cup, and I'm just going to yeah, use here. this one. This thing, is that what you? Yeah. What is that? This is just a little bit. The secret ingredient. And we're going to add water to this, yes? Yes. Right. I'm not stirring the fish. So we had a little bit of a base there. Yeah. Okay. And we're just going to cover the fish? Just going to cover the fish. All right. And put the top back on. Put the you could top do this back in on. the oven too, couldn't you, in a 350 oven? Absolutely. Called oven I don't know if we've learned how to do it in the uh, quick pot. What is instant that? pot. Instant pot. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> we have. There's so many instant pot cookbooks out there. The instant pot is the darling of the food right. world right now. So this is, if you can see this, it's probably just about a half an inch over the potatoes and onions and barely covering the fish. Right. So there's still some of the fish exposed. We're going to bring that to a simmer. Yes. And uh, if we could find the top. Okay. Oh, I moved it. Okay. All right. And quite lots of it. This is a very touchy little stove here. Power, I need to remember to um, leave my finger on it. That's I think right. that's what the key that's is. That's the key, I think. All right. High, no, what do we want it at? Let's do eight. Oop. There we go, seven five. Seven five, yeah. okay. Because we want to, I want to bring this, up, I want to bring this up to a boil. Yep. Then I want to lower it to a simmer. All right, I just did it. Give it point. its... Ten minutes? Potatoes and fish? Yeah. And so we make up these numbers, ten minutes, but you always check. And you check your fish for opaqueness. You make sure it's cooked all the way through. Certain fish are bigger than other fish, so they might be thicker. So that thicker one is obviously going to take uh, a little bit more time than the other one. So once again, we're having patience. And we're eating. And we're drinking wine. So we're back to our patience. We're back to patience. How's the uh, mm -hmm. casino? Mm -hmm. Good. Very good. Mm -hmm. That butter is fabulous. Very nice. Very okay. nice. Keep that butter in there, in that freezer. So, speaking of that. Yes. What should we, 
We're going to let this cook. Do you yeah. want to? Um, do you want to maybe do the compound butter now, and we'll do the arab arab arabiata. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah we'll leave that. Ooh, that is good. Yeah. Let's just. Uh, let me think of something here. I'm um, going to use a skillet, and we're going to melt some butter. Sure. Okay. You want the really heavy one or the other one? Uh, let's You're going to be tossing, so. We could have a duel. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this one right off the bat. All right. Now, do we have a burner here? I hope so. I certainly hope so. Right there. Okay. okay. So power is on, and now we want to tell this to... There. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it would be... Wouldn't it be this one? Yes. Or is there one over here? Oh. Uh -uh. There we go. We're learning. Like we knew what we were doing. Yeah, almost. Okay, so that's on, and we want it on high? Uh, let's go a little lower. Okay. Perfect. So cooking Very with nice. uh, chef and owner, uh, Bob Jarvis, and learning how to do the um, induction stove. All at the, same, at the time. same time. So this is a twofer. This <laughs> is a twofer show. <laughs> So I thought I would sneak an extra one in just because... Extra recipe. An extra us. recipe. It's not on the list. Maybe I can write one up mm -hmm, and get it to mm -hmm. you. I'll get it can, to you. Yep. We'll get it, on, get it on, on, the, the, uh, on the website and also on the, on the camera. Okay. Yep, that's heating right up. It so is amazing how I, quickly that heats up. I, it really I, I just wanted to put something else... Um, on here so that when people go, oh, all that butter, I don't need all that butter, it'll, I just wanted to show you yeah. that, that there's other uses okay. for it. And we've already talked about some of them, which is on vegetables, potatoes, pasta, and here we're going to be making a, uh, of just a very basic sauce. Right. Okay, so I should get the butter back out for you? Sure. Here you go. Okay. Get my tongs for that? Yes, please. So I just got some shallots going with a little bit of olive oil. And I brought some I brought some friends. Oh, you sure did. Look at that for a surprise. Great. And scallops, too. All right. This is a fancy way to use up your butter. What do you want, about an inch off here? Yes, please. Actually, uh, more. Yep. More? Do, no, do two just like that, that okay. size. And that'll be uh, towards the end. Okay. So, just, just so we don't um, drink it all ourselves, we're, we're going to give this just a little bit of love here. And I wanted to use like some of the ingredients that we, we already had um, through the other recipes, just so that we... And I'm going to reduce this... Um, this white wine down by half. Okay, so that's at a high simmer. That's a high. Parchment paper, the um, certainly the cook's friend. This is actually. There I go again. Oh, pepper. Do we need again? You got pepper. Um, I want to wrap up your. What is this thing? Oh, you just you're supposed to be able to just turn it. And if you turn it. That's the, that's the grating, how the, how, whether you want it large or small. So I have it on medium, and we'll give it a try again. Huh? It's 
we know that it did work before. Perfect. There it goes. No, it's not oh. making its noise. It's not singing to us. But those are. Those are beautiful. <laughs> Here. The old pre-graded is. That's uh, right. Okay. So parchment paper. It's available in sheets. It's available in rolls. Um, I think there was a time when nobody knew what parchment paper was. And uh, I think we all use wax paper a lot. I can get this to cut. But uh, now it's all over the place. I like the pre... pre Precise? Pre yeah, I like yeah. that too. Okay. And that's what I used for the compound butter. Okay. I also like the natural color, but that's just aesthetics. You can get it in any color. But you cannot substitute wax paper, right? For right. most parchment paper. You could for doing this though, couldn't you? Absolutely. Because you're freezing this, so you could certainly use wax paper for this. But uh, if you were going to be baking on it, you would not want to use wax paper. Whatever you're baking is going to come up looking like a little so bit of wax on it. Also with, with this recipe, once again, it's a single pot that I'm doing everything in. Starting to get down there a little bit. Right where I want it Let's to check be. Our fish. What's our fish doing? Oh, look at that. We're, we're getting there. I'm going to move that one down to a simmer over there. I'm going to hit this with a little bit of lemon. Again. Want to add some time? We could use some time. You know what I was thinking about? What were was you thinking about? About a tablespoon? You want to oh, shoot some, ba some sure. basil? Sure. Sure. Okay. So to chiffonade, we take this and we roll it up. Yes. All together with a big leaf on the outside, right? Right. Okay. So now that I've reduced my wine down. It smells great. A little more than half. Now comes the fun part. And we're going to make our beurre blanc. So I'll take it off the heat and I'll just slowly start whisking in my cold butter. And on this we're going to use the, the um, casino butter for this. Okay. And this is what it looks and like. And you want to take this off the heat. If it stays on the heat, it'll break. So... By breaking you mean separate? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we have our basil, our thyme. We're going to finish with this. Is that what we're going to do? Yes. All right. Okay. What is beeping? Do I think it's mad at me because I'm not on oh, the surface. Oh, you're not on the surface. Our stoves talk to us too. Maybe I'll turn, try to turn it off, but I don't know how to do so. Do you know how to turn that off? Yep. Um, right here. There. See that? I just waved my finger right over it. It's not doing it, though. Oh, it's, it's just telling you it's uh, a hot oh, surface. Oh, it's just a hot surface. Yep. Okay. However, so there we go. Our, our so what this did. These, I think these things think for us. They're supposed to think, you know, they're like, what is it called? Intuitive? I'm not sure how <laughs> intuitive we want this to be True. because it turned off our chowder. Oh boy. So we don't want that to happen. So on. Power. Power. On. Mm -hmm. oh, Finger on. Off. Yeah. And high. There we go. I can hear it. Perfect. Okay. All right. It's a very sensitive top. Is yours that sensitive no. at home? No, <laughs> mine isn't either. It never talks to me like that. So here we go. 
It's probably as you can see. Moment. It's thickening beautifully. Yeah. It's thickening itself. Mm. And our seafood is pretty much cooked. It's all cooked. Yep. And that was it. Really cooked in the white wine, and uh, smells wonderful, doesn't it? it looks beautiful. More butter we're going to need, or you think that's enough? I think that's, I think that's good okay. for, for where we're at. All right, so let me wrap this baby up. I took the pasta out. Oh, you did? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sorry. Here it is, thank you. Perfect. And I'm going to get you a plate. So you could even wrap these individually if you wanted to. Um, have them at home, just all wrapped up in a plastic bag if you have enough room in your freezer. I don't know, I never do. Twist these up so you have, what is this? What would you say? This is about two tablespoons, right? Absolutely. So you know that you have your two tablespoons. Just grab one and uh, you know throw it on your steak, your chicken, your, your fish, your protein, your vegetables. And that's enough to do a... Uh, it's enough to do a another pasta one dish. Of these. Okay. Another so one of these. This is the hard part. The twirly. I may have a spoon here if you want to spoon some of the sauce over. Isn't that beautiful? So this is cooking at a medium high. Oh, you're going to get fancy. Oh, why not? See what happens when you grow up in the chart room? <laughs> <laughs> you That's grow up beautiful. In the world that we do. Yeah. But truly, um, a lot of what we do is eat with our eyes first. Absolutely. Is this something that's on the. Um, no, this is just something I made something up while made I was up. thinking about. Uh, well, I was thinking about what we were going to do gonna, uh, okay. over here. Okay. And there we have our garnishes. Beautiful. Absolutely. Let's move this over. Okay. Get rid of this guy. Slide this one right out yeah. here. Absolutely. Like beautiful. that. That was the, the bonus dish right yep. there. Mm. Well, mm. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Perfect amount of pepper. <laughs> mm. Good. All right. And nice and seafoody too, because everything opened and sort of gave it its a little lower. Yes. And I think we're five. Uh, we're here. You can we're here? go a little lower than okay. that. Okay. Wow, borrow. how quickly that cooked. Yeah. And you want some cream? Do we have it in the freezer? I'm going to borrow. I have half and half here. Yes. So I'm just going to, I'm going to reduce this down just a little more. So you want it higher? Um, one more. Go to four. There you go. Okay. Perfect. And we're just going to let that go. And... The fish was almost there. The potatoes are, they're both going to finish right at the same exact time. It's actually going to be, uh, going to be perfect, but. So this is, Bob, about a cup of, a little more than a cup of heavy cream. Is perfect. that going to be enough? Yeah, mm -hmm. not yet. No, so I won't yet. we'll, um, see, you can see that, see that fish right there? Mm -hmm. It's, it's still not ready. Mm -hmm. In the now, middle. Now, this fish is ready, uh -huh. but this one okay. is not, so. We're just going to spread these out a little bit, okay. cover them just a little bit longer. Okay. Couple. About two more minutes? Yep, two okay. more minutes. Okay. So we've got our clams. We've got a beautiful extra bonus dish. Bonus and dish. And we will get that on. Um, we could do that with all shrimp. We could do it with all mussels. Um, we could do it with... All scallops, or I do like chicken. the combination chicken too. Chicken, but uh, I really like the look of the of the darker of the mussels. Yeah. Around. Yep. It. Are so those Prince Edward Island? It, they are. Okay. They are. Yeah. So it's just just an easy.
cheese to make with the compound butter that you kept in your ice box, yep. pulling it out. Uh, you didn't use it all when you made the casino butter. It's perfect that you, uh, you pull it out and make a sauce at any point in time, you know. Like I said, slice off a piece, finish your, your fish in the, in the oven. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, three minutes away from being done. You put that little piece of casino butter on top. Perfect. Up oh, timers. Is that your timer? No. Oh. <laughs> Is it yours? <laughs> we didn't set a timer. Oh, timer that's perfect. perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> so we snuck in the uh, the extra dish, and I think we're oh, uh, we're still gonna go for our 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 Arbiata. You're good. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll have you do it. All right. I'm going to do a little quick clean up over here. Okay. And then we have our San Marzano dilemma, always, right? <laughs> um, San Marzano tomatoes, which is very easy to get fooled that you're paying for San Marzano tomatoes, which have to be DOP certified from. Uh, from Italy, correct? Yes. Or you could have San Marzano style tomatoes, which right. means that they are grown, uh, as I, correct me if I'm wrong, Chef, but I think it's that um, they are uh, the seeds from the San Marzano tomatoes, so they're styled after San Marzano tomatoes. They're like a plum tomato, and they're probably grown in this country or someplace else. Um, um, well, that can, you know, that's, that's something to, Talk to your to, to battle about. Right. Um, this is what what we'll okay. be using. Beautiful. Um, okay. Today. All right. But there's a ton of beautiful um, tomatoes. Me personally, I always like to use a whole tomato and then break it down. So if I want to keep it somewhat chunky, I just think that you get a better flavor from a whole tomato. Mm -hmm. It's less processed. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can do what you want. If you want to puree it all the way to um, a Pomodoro where it's just very fine and, you know, silky sauce into something a little bit more hearty. Mm -hmm. Now you can go either way. It's, it's personal preference. Yes. So it, there's no, oh, it has to be done this way. Right. That's not true. It's, right. it's how you like it. So. Okay. And look how nice and easy they make that for us with the we, tops. We like that. We like that. We do like that. Absolutely. All right. So what I'm thinking is we're probably going to need this pan. For the, we can use this for the pasta, yes? Perfect. And now we know how to turn it on. Won't we turn it on yet? Hopefully. I know. So everybody says when you get an induction cooktop, you've got to throw out all your pans. But if you had really good pans in the beginning uh, that have enough uh, um, of the it, metallic, right? Um, not metallic, but um, magnet. They're, they need to be magnetized somehow right. to be able to uh, to use on. on I don't this know anything about that. You don't you're, know anything no. about that because all your pans are good because you're a chef, <laughs> so you already had them all good. Um, Le Creuset, all of the really heavy ones. This is an all clad. Uh, Cuisinart, all of those are usually. But you, if you're buying for an induction cooktop, make sure that uh, you double check it with a magnet uh, because there's nothing worse than getting new stuff and then finding out that uh, it doesn't work. Mm. All right, that's beautiful. And our cream. All mm. right. Gorgeous. Yeah. So you see how the fish is, is flaking up. Mm -hmm. just I just did oh, that okay. by mistake. Sorry. This is the most sensitive cooktop so, I have ever seen in my life. So this is the time where, for me, if you were doing the, the bouquet of the time, uh -huh. and like the like way I that said, you like to do it, it in, yeah. but also for me, I always like to pull the, the bay leaf out okay. now. Okay. Yeah. 
Mine is the lazy way because I, like I said, I don't like uh, destemming the, yeah. the thyme leaves, but uh, if you do throw it in together, tie it with a little piece of string, and yeah. then you just fish the whole thing out and you're set. And you've still got all your fresh thyme in there. Absolutely. The only difference is that you didn't. I didn't. I wouldn't have gotten a chance to uh, um, to sort of bring up the fragrance by uh, by chopping it. So. For sure. Five. Uh, we can turn that down just a okay. little bit now. And we're going to add our cream. Now, once again, um, if you like it creamy, 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 use heavy. If you like it a li a step down, light cream. If you like it a little step down from there, half and half, right? You know, it's. Once again, it's all personal preference. Um, I use half and half uh, just because I want it to be that brothy fish jump out. And I just want a little bit of that rounded cream with, um, with the half and half, so. Okay. You could also, in a pinch, use evaporated milk, yes? Have you done that? I've never done that. It's really, it's an amazing uh, product. It, um, it's a, there's an old, old, I think it's, well, it can't be that old because I don't know when they started making evaporated milk, but there are recipes for, for making fish chowder and clam chowder with evaporated milk. I Beautiful. suspect that it had to do with refrigeration and uh, um, what people needed to do at the, at the time before all this industrialized stuff came along. That is absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Mm. Perfect. So as Gail said, Gail likes to go fancy, fancy. I'm kind of, I'm a little from the old school, but. Um, I didn't grow up in the chart room. Mmm. <laughs> Good. But if we want to give it a little. Uh, That's great. You know, a little, a little something, something. You got guests coming over. You just, okay. you give it a little sprig. And when it goes down in front of them, that time just really busts out. But. Beautiful. Um, you know, a winter, cold winter night, and you're putting a bowl of haddock chowder in front of six friends around the table. Mm -hmm. um, and a loaf of homemade bread, and you are uh, set we're to go. You know, set yeah, to that, go. That's, uh, that's, there's not much to say about, about that. That's so, just gorgeous. Yeah, it's okay. delicious, too. It is. Yeah. It is. All right. So are we going to cook on this burner, or you want to move, move over to this one? Yeah. Um, do I have something that I can... I think we can move this over here. Okay, sure. Second so away of the camera. I don't think so. Okay, so, uh, Erbiata. Moving right along. Okay. Also known as the angry sauce. Mm -hmm. It's angry because, um, hot pepper flakes. Uh, hot pepper flakes, or are we using this baby? Uh, I like to use the red pepper flakes. Okay. On, on this dish. Why? You can use... You can use fresh chilies mm -hmm. um, if you prefer. I think you can control your heat ah, okay. uh, better by using red pepper flakes. Now, if you have a, a worked out recipe that you're like, I use an eighth of a, mm -hmm. of a chili, whatever your favorite type of chili is, by all means, you know, go crazy. Once again, it's, it's cooking. Preference. Yes, yep, absolutely. Personal. So. Um. When we were talking before um, the show started, we were talking about uh, one of the things that you like about your, or the only thing at this point, that as you're getting used to it for your induction cooktop was making pasta. And uh, I said, what kind of pasta do your kids like? And he yeah. said, yeah, I have three different, uh, three different, three different pasta kids. Right? Yes, absolutely. So, so they cover all the bases. Uh, there's one that will only eat red, just a straight <laughs> tomato sauce. Okay. There's one that uh, will eat everything but loves Alfredo. There's one that will eat everything, once again another boy, uh, but he likes a meat sauce. And then there's one that does no sauce, jet, you know, this is the baby, of course. Um, she wants butter and cheese only, and the, and the cheese has to be the perfect amount. If it's too much or too less, uh, there's, it's trouble in paradise. So, um, 
Yeah, so. And that would be paradise to have yeah, your dad making you th so, making four different pasta dishes. Yeah, so, but we're not doing that. Where everybody's eating everything, unfortunately, okay. uh, you get what you get and you don't get upset. And that's, okay. the, that's the, the theory. How are we looking on heat okay. there? Okay, I'm on good. six right here. All yeah. right. Oil? Yes. So this is a little uh, olive oil that I brought back from Italy. Okay. I was just in Italy in, uh, in October. Is that how you learned to roll your R's, or did you uh, learn that beforehand? I think I learned it before. I've been well, uh, rolling. I've there. been rolling my my R's for a long well, time. So cool. uh, so this loves Smells olive good. oil. This is. Were you um, in Tuscany? Where were you? I was in Tuscany, oh. and and this olive oil oh. is is uh, unbelievable. I, Again, it, like you can smell it, yes. and you just touch. Here, I'll send you, you towards the camera. Yeah, you <laughs> you just toss pasta just in that olive oil, and it's oh. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Good. We're getting there. Okay. If we do three more shows, yeah. we'll know this stove. We will. We will. The stove will know us too. Believe me. <laughs> I'm doing a little dishes over here real quick. Okay. I'm just shaking this a little bit, okay? Which I probably shouldn't do on an induction cooktop. All right, so we have uh, olive oil in the pan. Mm -hmm. And we have six cloves of garlic in the pan. And we're going to just move that. Can we turn that down just we a little bit? We can to five. So, yes, please. Okay. So we don't want to brown our garlic. We don't want to cook our garlic quick. Where's our patience provider? <laughs> we want to relax. Have a sip of wine. Yeah, don't have a sip of wine. wine, relax. Now, did you once again, already? You want I more? did. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> once again, personal preference on the red pepper flakes. That's why I suggest red pepper flakes. And what we're doing here, There in, you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Is just infusing oil. We're just getting all those flavors all through that olive oil. Because the recipe does actually call for a, um, want it higher? Three? Three is good. Okay. Perfect. A uh, quarter of a cup of olive oil. Yeah. So Which we we'll use some of that towards the end. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So while, you're, while your onions are just kind of chilling out you there and infusing parsley. that oil. What I'm going to do is get my tomatoes going here. Okay. And I'll get the pasta out. Sure. So this is Bucatino's. This is, this is Bucatino. We do a, so we do a seafood arabiata uh -huh. um, over there. But this is going to be... Uh, you know, just a straightforward Arabiata. And, and then, once again, um, there's no rules. If you want to do chicken with it, perfect. Mm -hmm. If you want to do sausage and chicken, or straight sausage, hot sausage, sweet sausage, perfect. Chicken sausage, mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. If you want to do seafood, you want to do shrimp, you want to do scallops, it's all, once again, we're, we're cooking. There, mm -hmm. There's, you know, just because, um, the recipe you know, calls we for do it right. as, as a seafood mm -hmm. doesn't mean, um, you know, you can't put uh, everything in anything. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that's, mm. that's nicey-nicey right there. Okay. When do we add salt and pepper? When we add the tomatoes? Yes. Okay. Oh, look at those beautiful so, tomatoes. These, these are unbelievable tomatoes. Because we're trying to do the... Uh, the one pot thing here. Mm -hmm. um, for me, this is this is one that I I got to do an extra dish on. Unfo oh, because we need to uh, cut up the tomatoes. Yeah, okay. I I like to uh, just kind of give them a a little bit of mash. Yeah. So I like some. I like some some texture to my to the tomato. Okay. So this is all I'm going to do to it. Okay, that makes sense. Some people call for taking some recipes call for taking um, scissors and cutting right. or putting the knife, but it seems to me that to put the knife in the can and sort of do that is you not, know, I, not the best way to do it. This is good. Uh, I had 
one chef that I worked under um, out in Colorado, and he had us do it by hand. We had to do it by really? hand. Yeah, that was his yeah. thing. Uh, he was nuts. But, um, <laughs> but that was his thing, and, and he, you know, felt like it, it didn't bruise or mm, like ruin okay. the, yeah. the texture of the tomato. Not so as aggressive we, as mashing probably. Right, yeah. right. Um, but if you have a hand blender and you want to just give it a, a quick buzz, you know, that's all uh, that's all legal. Blender. Yep, yep. Everything's good. Friend. So yeah. for like like I said, for me, I, I kind of like a little bit of texture to it. So you can see that okay. the olive oil is still there when we put the tomatoes in. Look at the olive oil around the sides. I know, it's beautiful. beautiful. Absolutely. Can you tell me what food? <laughs> Everything is beautiful and oh smells wonderful. I know, but it's so, true, it's great. I mean, Look at that. That oil is just perfectly infused yeah. with, uh, with that garlic. And that's just going to go through Heat all these tomatoes. Bit. Yes, please. We'll bring it to a simmer and then we'll turn it down again. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And you put in a couple teaspoons, one teaspoon of uh, red pepper flakes. Yes. Okay. I think our recipe calls for a quarter of a cup of olive oil and I'd say we used almost a quarter of a cup. And then you're going to use a little bit more to finish, right? Correct. Okay. So once once the garlic and the and the red pepper flakes are well mixed in. Well mixed in. Okay. A little salt pepper. Okay. You want to try your gun again? No, I'm right. mad at it. <laughs> Trudeau. And this sauce is Italian to the core, I feel like. You know, this isn't your Sunday gravy that's gonna, gonna cook for eight you know, hours, eight hours yeah. and With all pork day ribs and, and all, all of that. And this is, this is, vi this is perfect. This is simple. This is easy. This is flavorful. This is versatile. Um, it's just, it's just an easy, Easy sauce to uh, to work with, okay. and delicious on top of that. You're gonna do chiffonade again. I am. Okay. Your basil's nice. All right, I'm just turning it down a Perfect. little bit. Perfect. Yep. So Thank you. Just a little bit of a simmer. And we're going to put the pasta right in this and let the pasta cook in the sauce. Absolutely. So um, one thing we did because of burner space, I uh, pre-cooked some some, pasta. some penne. Okay. And you can use any any kind of any kind of pasta any, that you, you like on this one. Okay. Do you serve gluten free? Pasta, yes. Bucatinis? Yep. Uh, all three. Bucatinos. Yep. Bucatinos, right? Bucatino. And that's on um, Route 151. 151 and 28A. Mm -hmm. The old, uh, the old Cooney Corners, the old Wicker Tree, the old Willow Field, <laughs> the old. Uh, it? Willow. Julian's. Beach House, oh and my now goodness. Bucatino. So uh, from the 50s all the way till now. Um, and I, w I will have to say that, uh, you know, we are, we're unbelievably proud here in Falmouth, um, which, you know, my number one and my baby of all the restaurants is the, is the quarter deck. And we're unbelievably proud to only be the, the third <coughs> owner there. Uh, Chet Wright, uh, Rob and Rita Pacheco, mm -hmm. and then, then us. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
you know, the quarter deck has so much history in Falmouth. It's it's an honor. It? How old is it? Twenty. What do you think? Well, before the before it was the quarter deck, it was the Little New Yorker. So I think that goes really? back to the fifties, also. Wow. Maybe a little bit deeper than that, but the quarter deck was named the quarter deck in early sixties. I don't exactly know the date. Do you, Rita? <laughs> so we will add. Our basil. Our basil. Mm -hmm. Parsley. And we'll give it a little parsley and those freshy herbs. And Pecorino Romano is for serving, correct? Or do we add some? We're going to add a little okay. right now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. How often do you get your knives sharpened at the. Once a week. Once a week? Yep. And that does it, huh? And that does. Okay. So that's about a good third of a cup of grated um, pecorino. You could use Parmesan? Absolutely. Okay. I'm a, I'm a pecorino guy. Yeah, so I am. I, I'm into um, pecorino I girl. mean, <laughs> I, I, I love Reggiano for, for certain, for certain um, things, but this, I feel like the sharpness um, comes through. Look at that. That's beautiful. That unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> just good. That is unbelievable. I'm so going to put this over here okay. because I want to just heat this up for some of our audience Absolutely. for later. So, uh, and I'm just going to add a little bit of our our cooked penne here. Give this a little little toss. This is obviously family style. This isn't one. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's great. And you could serve this with just a salad. Oh. Um, you could certainly just throw some fish on the grill and Ab serve it as a side absolutely. or put the fish on top of it. A absolutely. Um, yeah. And you could even do some of your compo compound butter on top if you wanted to. Or, you, or um, on you the know, protein. What's, what's better than a little bit of uh, grilled Italian bread? Mm -hmm. And a little bit of that casino butter. Now you have oh. garlic butter mm -hmm. and two big chunks of that with on some Portuguese bread mm -hmm. or some Italian mm -hmm. bread. And you're making everybody hungry. Ah, uh, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. We're open seven days a week, by the way. Yeah. And when? Tell me about the uh, the pilot house. When does that open? So we're going to open in April. Okay. Um, Soon. Yeah, very soon. So we've already started. Uh, we've already started working over there and and getting her ready. So um, you know, you blink and it'll be Fourth of July. I know. And then you blink again and it's Labor Day. So um. <laughs> this looks just great. Mm -hmm. Whoa! I just got the angry part. Oh, nice. I'm going to break into a sweat. And I held back a little bit. Mm. Mm. All Fine. right. Those tomatoes really do make a difference. <coughs> Time for wine. Delicious. Mm. All right. So I think we are probably just about winding down. Perfect. Anything else that um, I'm trying to think if there's anything more that I want people to know about you and your restaurants? Um, other than just go and, uh, and enjoy and say you saw this done on FCTV. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, you are very welcome. That's beautiful. All right. So another ending to another Cooking in Falmouth. And uh, thank you for watching. And we'll be back next month with another chef. And... I thank you, sir, for oh, giving up you. your time and your ingredients. No problem. And uh, you have just done a wonderful, wonderful job. Look at this. All right. How is that? Gorgeous. Just very gorgeous. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cooking in Falmouth is made possible in part by the following. 
Appliances donated by Crane Appliance. Kitchen installation donated by M. Duffany Builders. Specialty Studio Electric and Gallery Installation donated by David Rogers Electric. Kitchenware donated by Eastman's Hardware.